I do love teaching. I can't think of anything other than parenting more important than what we do each and every day when we go in and nurture the next generation. And we're here tonight to celebrate the wonderful work that teachers do, and especially Amy and Pollock, but a lot of other quality teachers sitting in this room who've made a huge impact in the world. You not only help the children, but you help their families, and of course you help your colleagues, other teachers, to deliver the most precious gift, I think, at least the most precious academic gift that anybody could deliver, and that's the gift of literacy. And that's why we're here at Reading for the Love of It. We care about reading and writing, listening, speaking, thinking, right? <laughs> whether they're our students or our own children. I have eight great nieces. A year ago, February, I sent red tights to all of my great nieces because they're all between about two and 10 years of age. So I sent red tights to all the girls and I got a thank you note back from Leah, who's seven. I thought you might be interested in what Leah wrote. Dear Great Aunt Mary Bigger. Now she calls me Great Aunt Mary Bigger because they got another Great Aunt Mary on the other side of the family. So she calls me by my whole name. Dear Great Aunt Mary Bigger, thank you for the red tights. Spelled T I T S. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for the red tights you sent for Valentine's Day. Red is my fourth favorite color. <laughs> I was going to make Leah rewrite this and spell tights correctly. And I was going, I tried to explain to her the niceties that when someone sends you a gift, you don't write to them and tell them it's your fourth favorite color. But she said somehow that was lost on Leah. And she said, besides, then I remembered who I was sending it to. And so I knew you'd get a lot more mileage out of it this way. <laughs> so I called Susie, I said, you're so right. I've been telling everybody I know about the red tights. Uh, that was their fourth favorite color. Leave it to the children to be honest. Uh, I got this from Jerome, one of my grade threes. Dear Mrs. Wiggler, thank you for being my reading teacher. I don't care if the other kids don't like you, I like you. <laughs> about teaching. I brought a couple to share. I love John Dewey. He says, every teacher should realize the dignity of the calling. It is a calling. To me, it is like the priesthood, the rabbinate, the pastor, that kind of thing. We're on a mission. We care about the future. We care about young people, or we would not choose to spend our adult work life <laughs> in a school. We, we would. There's like, got to be easier ways to make a living. <laughs> but we know how important it is. We know that our future leaders, our future parents, our future Everybody is sitting there in those rooms today with us. And we do a good job to help those young people grow up and be the kind of people we want to have as neighbors, as bosses, as leaders. And I say, God, your future son-in-law might be in your room. <laughs> oh, it's not Jeremy. <laughs> anyway, we know that we've got the future in our hands today. That's, that's remarkable. Think about the importance of that. So I love that. It's a calling. I think one of the best quotes I ever heard about teaching came from Mahatma Gandhi, the wonderful Indian philosopher and leader. Gandhi says, the best textbook for a pupil is his teacher. Mm. We're the textbooks. Mm. Kids read us as surely as they read any book. They know what we value. They know what we care about. We lend our time and presence to those things that we value. And so we've got to be the most extraordinary people of anybody because, you see, the kids are going to be us. They're going to be us. We've got to be the best role models. We might be the best role models some children have. That's a sobering thought. Not about you, but I mean, <laughs> if I'm the best they got, man, those poor kids. But really, we might be the best adult role model they have. And even if they have a lot of other wonderful role models in their life, we might be, in some instances, the one they spend the most time with. Yeah. We're important people doing extraordinarily important work doing an extraordinarily important job. And a third quote that i like to share came from a book called Prince of Ties. Any of you ever read that book by Pat Conroy? Yeah. Some of you probably saw the movie. Nick Nolte plays the lead character, Tom. Tom is a teacher and a coach, a good teacher, good coach. His sister, 
Let's call her a social climber. She doesn't value what Tom has chosen to do with his life. She rails at him. She says, you're just a teacher. You could have done more with your life. You settled. You're just a teacher. And he says that one too many times. And he turns to her. And I think he speaks for all of us, his real life counterparts, when he says this. Listen to me. There is no word in the English language that I revere more than teacher. None. My heart sings when a kid refers to me as his teacher. We know what he's saying. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? It sure is. When I was in college, I taught in a preschool, had the two and three-year-olds. One night I'm in the grocery store. <laughs> you don't live anywhere except the preschool when you're a preschool teacher. The kids don't know you exist outside of that environment. So I'm in the grocery store, and little Darla comes around the end of the counter with her mother. I am this close, I mean, closer than I am here, and I'm just ready to say, hi, Darla. And her eyes are this big. And she's staring, and she said, I have a teacher that looks just like you. 